Hey there, everyone. It's Stu Monroe for Horror DNA, and I have the privilege of speaking with the writer and director of the criminally underrated films Rebound and the Ice Cream Truck, and most recently, the short film Dear Guest, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Megan Friel Johnson. Megan, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. <laughs> doing good. Just just kind of getting home from work and uh, jumping on this before settling in for the evening. I got to squeeze it in or I can get it in. Yeah, nice. <laughs> How's everything going for you out there? Everything's good. Um, you know, considering I'm happy to be in a warm weather state, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, just getting ready for the holidays. Absolutely. I'm with you on the warm weather. I'm in I'm in North Texas and it's, yeah. It does. It doesn't get cold here in any traditional sense either. So it's kind of nice this time of year to not really have to deal with freezing your butt off the whole time. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and considering what's going on, it allows you to be a little, you know, be social. You know, yeah. Because you can be outside and you know try to be responsible. Absolutely. I'm not sure I've spent this much time outside in any year probably since I was eight or nine right. years old you know yeah but you learn to you learn to appreciate it I think we've all learned to appreciate a few things this year for sure yeah for sure absolutely so um the ice cream truck uh, to go back a little bit at first mm-hmm. um was actually the second film that I ever professionally reviewed when I started working for horror DNA Oh right. And, yeah, it was it was my it was my second one, and it, you know it really showed me why uh, indie film was where I needed to be focusing, even even with my site too. So, um, looking back on that the whole experience with the ice cream truck, um, what does that what does that film mean to you? Well, the ice cream truck was my second feature, um, you know, and I had been a producer for a long time. Before that, I kind of got into making films myself out of pretty pretty much desperation of just wanting to get things made. It's really hard to get films made. So sometimes, you know, for me, I put myself in the mix so I could make more compromises, compromises that other filmmakers weren't willing to make um, so that I could, you know, be on set, which is, you know, where I love to be. Um, and so the ice cream truck was my second film and I wrote it when I lived in an area where there were a lot of ice cream trucks that were giving out real ice cream. They were giving out, you know, banana splits and ice cream cones. And it just seemed so strange to me (laughs) that, you know, (laughs) we're letting our kids essentially get ice cream from a car, you know, and it, it just kind of, the idea came from that. And, you know, I'm a firm believer, as I think a lot, you know, there are some horror filmmakers that try to use horror as a vehicle to tell other stories and to um, talk about things that are not just the horror. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and it's really fun to play with that genre in that way. And, you know, I, I, I have two kids. My daughter had just been born and you know, I think we all kind of want, not want to be younger, but kind of want to revisit our youth in some way. Like I have like fantasies about time travel. (laughs) And so (laughs) this was kind of part of that because, you know, Mary is, you know, she moves back to her hometown and she just kind of feels out of place with all these moms that, you know, are so into being moms and, wives tending their yards and she just didn't she's not that kind of character and so you know being back in her hometown without her family since they're not there yet like she found more in common with the young people and so that was kind of the theme that hangs over the film and and I love slashers I think slashers are really fun so I kind of wanted to make a slasher for you know, a different audience, I guess. Yeah, definitely, definitely different because it's, 
a, a woman in her 30s, that sort of mm-hmm. environment, just just not what you see in that type of film, which kind of, I know, grabbed me right off the bat. There's a sense of almost disorientation from the beginning where it's just kind of right. like, what the hell's going on here that sticks around for the whole movie until, of course, you get to the that ending, which once you see it, you kind of have a hard time getting it out of your head. So that's yeah. a cool space to operate in for sure. I mean, it was a really fun movie to make. Um, you know, again, I'm still in the independent space um, as far as a filmmaker myself. I mean, every film gets bigger. Um, but, you know, you when you make independent films, you, you have to just, like, love your story and love what you're doing and try to do the best that you can with the resources that you have. Um, so being a producer first was helpful in that way. You know, because I understood mm-hmm. so many of the fundamentals of filmmaking and the the parts that I think a lot of filmmakers don't know all the ins and outs of. Um, yeah. You know, I would say a lot of directors who went to film school could probably talk circles around me about, like, directing lingo. But I probably know how to put a film together more than they do, you know. For sure, yeah. I, th- I think that's probably a lot more important to know than you know, all that high-end director. Yeah, stuff, that's stuff you know. to learn. Yeah, I'm like, what's that doohickey? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have to learn that as I go, you know, about certain, just all the, you know, the technical stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, with uh, <laughs> with Dear Guest, I'm going to go ahead and just call it uh, right here mm-hmm. and say that, you know, it's, I feel like it's something we'll see you revisiting sooner rather than later as a feature. Just just the way it goes in that in that time frame. How dark exactly in your head do you see that story ending up getting? Because it can go so many ways right now. Yes, for sure. Um, you know, Dear Guest was I had never done a short before, and I had the opportunity to pitch to um, Hulu for the Halloween thing that they do every year. But they wanted two-minute shorts. And Dear Guest, I'm sure written was probably about five minutes. um, But I didn't get selected. And so initially it was, um, I mean, like, I mean, yeah, it would have been probably five minutes. And so I decided to expand it and make it anyway uh, because I really liked it. And, you know, as a director, you have to just kind of stay fresh. And I thought it would be, you know, a good thing, fun thing to do. I, you know, I think I would make it dark, but in a classy way. I, you know, definitely, I know, you know, the horror fans want, they want suspense, but they also want kills. But when you have a limited cast, there's only so much you can do. So I think you have to kind of, there's only two cast members, at least in the short. So, I'm not sure if who I would add or if I would just keep it with them. I think I've started expanding the script a little bit, but I don't know if I would add anybody. I'd have to really think about it because you don't want to bore your audience, you know, and you don't want people to be like, oh, this could be a short, (laughs) you know, when they see (laughs) the whole thing. So I don't know, but my favorite, you know, my first, my favorite suspense thrillers are the ones that have a lot of kind of like trickery and like puzzles to solve. And I think that's one of the fun things about Dear Guest. And I think I would really play that up, you know, as a more like suspenseful, the game. Do you remember that movie in the nineties? Oh my God. Yes. That's one of my personal favorites. Just yes. the so psychology. Imagine that. Is yeah. Ugly. But I wouldn't want to do torture porn or anything like that. I don't think that's, that's not really my thing. So mm-hmm. I, I'm not really sure what I would do. And, yes, for sure, I would love to make it into a feature. I think there's a lot you can do there. And I think one of the things that I was pleased that a lot of people liked about it is that I didn't go the way of typical, like, invasion, you know, torture. Yeah, yeah, because there's, there's a template set for all those, whereas – the sort of two person psychological drama. Yeah, you could you could do some really interesting things locked into that space. Plus it's it's a nice right. house. It's a good place to shoot. it's you know, 
the environment's excellent for that. Yeah. I mean, it was really fun, and the actresses were so good, and it was really a pleasure to work with them. Yeah, they were they were fantastic. I didn't realize that um what movie was it? Now 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 that I'm sitting here on the phone with you, I'm brain farting on the uh the movie that one of the two actresses was in. She was a lot younger when she um, was in was it. you mean Ashley Bell in The yeah, Last Exorcism? Yes. Yeah. The Last Exorcism, that's right. Yeah, and you she's could also tell... in a a movie called Carnage Park, which people seem to like a lot. Hmm, I haven't seen that one yet. I'll have to look mm-hmm. it up. I was Last Exorcism was a pleasant surprise, and mm-hmm. you could see you could see she had some some real chops. But I spent I actually watched it a couple times in a row because I spent some time staring at her, going, "Man, she looks familiar. Who the hell is that?" And then yeah, I right. Up like, wow, okay. <laughs> she was in a movie called Carnage Park and Psychopaths from this horror director named Mickey Keating that people know her from a lot. And in the last exorcism, she she said a lot of the like body contortion she did do herself. That that was not oh, special wow. effects. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> that's intense. I just kind of assumed they were special effects. Yeah, yeah, right. I know. You do. I mean, in a lot of those movies, those body effects are so common. You just you assume they're all special effects because unless your name's Javier Botate, you can't really twist in those. Directions. Right. That's pretty impressive. I did, that's, I'm learning stuff today. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with um, kind of looking at the future, you all your works have sort of a sensibility I really like. And I know some people, the slow burn gets them a little bit, maybe because they're not patient. But I like the sort of practical and real life sensibility. You have a you have a pretty good understanding of when to turn the horror up and when to kind of focus more on character and the connection with the audience. Um, That balance you're kind of known for already, is that something we can expect on hunting season or is that going to get as nasty as it looks? Because that's got some really gross potential to be a a lot of fun. Hunting season is is definitely um, more violent. Um, It does have the slow burn. It takes a a minute to um, crank up. But, yeah, it's, you know, there's a lot of, you know, weaponry and um, cat and mouse. Hunting season was supposed to shoot, actually, this October. um, And one of the actors uh, had a scheduling conflict and just there were some COVID problems with the film that was shooting right before mine. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that it'll be February or March of this year. It's been pushed so many times. Um, But it's a great, it's a really fun story and I think people are going to like it and it's definitely my most violent and um, most kills I know it's very important <laughs> nice uh, I was getting, that, was getting that vibe burn. Hey, yeah, I mean you sure. starting off with a slow burn is uh, I don't understand people that gripe about slow burn because it all in my opinion it always makes a movie better and unless you're jumping right in and doing a straight splattery horror comedy you gotta you gotta give us time to care about the characters for sure for sure i i mean my favorite horror films start out slower because i do i love when horror gets atmosphere right i it's you know that's when horror can be really the artistic nature of it can shine and i i my favorite horror filmmakers really care about that about the atmosphere and the tension and the music. And so I try to do that as well. Definitely. Yeah. Um, on hunting season, speaking of that one again, cause I'm really just kind of looking forward to it. I had read an interview with you, but it, I don't see it on IMDB anyways. It's, you said you, you did cast Deanna Russo. Is she in hunting season? There's some casting change changing around a little bit. I I don't want to get into too much specifics um, mm-hmm. because time has uh, gone by. But I believe Deanna will be in it. I'm not sure uh, which part, but there are other casting um, updates. But I'm not at liberty to give them. But I think people oh, okay. will be really happy about them. Yeah, no, I I understand completely. It, yeah. It, anytime she's in, there will be an it, announcement. Yeah, probably soon. I think there will be an announcement, but I, the company involved is 
the you know they are the powers that be to say when that will be announced. Got you, got you. How uh, I, I'm just a good fan of hers. How important know, was she to amazing. the ice cream truck? Because I, I feel like she was so instrumental to the ice cream truck turning out the way it did. How important was she for you as a filmmaker to really solidify that? I loved working with her so much, and she is such a fantastic actress. I I just can't say enough great things about her, and I think she is a big reason that uh, people really love the film, and they are really drawn to her and how authentic she is in it. She's just as she has such a relatable quality. Um, you just you know the character is kind of an introvert, and and she. Diana is also a little bit of an introvert and you can really see that she understands that element of the character and, and a feeling that we all kind of feel when we're talk, you know, feeling out of place or talking to people that we are not vibing with and, you know, how small talk can be painful. <laughs> and <laughs> I, you know, she just, she just has such a presence and yeah, I mean, she was instrumental in that us caring about her and really relating to her struggles. Yes. I, I would love to work with Deanna and everything, frankly. <laughs> I don't blame you at all. She brings, she brings a lot to the table and that, the, that horror that was really in the ice cream truck is a different, a different kind of thing. And I think fans that are stuck on a lot of the 80s style don't exactly get it, but it seems to me like it takes, kind of times like we're living in right now for people to start understanding how subjective and personal horror really is. It's not always the slasher sure. running around. Sometimes it's just, like you said, being alienated and, you know, alone in that neighborhood and feeling like you're out of place. There's something terrifying about that, too. I love that you bring right. that to the table. Well, I've noticed this year, too, especially that people are still discovering the ice cream truck, I, I feel like it's been kind of a, not a slow progression, but, you know, here we are over four years after it came out, and I and people are really still the same kind of passionate about it. I find that people, like, love it, love it, love it, or they mm-hmm. don't understand it at all, and there's not a lot of in-between. <laughs> but I feel like some of my favorite horror films kind of um, get that reaction, you know, and yeah. so I'm honored that people are, you know, feeling one way specifically because that means it's not your usual fare, you know. For sure. Like if you if everybody universally gets it, you almost tend to feel like maybe you haven't made strong enough of a statement. <laughs> or, or it's a really good movie. But it, being forgettable is what I think you don't want to be, you know, or just being like, what a, uh, you know, uh, three stars or whatever it is. But Yeah. One of those, I didn't feel like I wasted my time, but it could have been better kind of things. Yeah, yeah, for (laughs) sure. I noticed, uh, reading some of your other interviews, um, you professed a a pretty big love for April Fool's Day, (laughs) which I couldn't agree more. (laughs) That that movie holds the distinction Uh, of being the first horror movie that I actually ever picked out for myself at the video store. I don't remember. I don't remember what age I was, but it was, it was the eighties and I was pretty young. Um, Well, that's a pretty good one to watch if you're young, I think. Oh, that, that, that ending. You know what I mean? Yes, for sure. It doesn't get too nasty, but it gives you enough. I don't want to say why for those. Yeah. Who who haven't, I mean, I can't imagine who hasn't seen it, but yes. (laughs) And I had a really like a strong love for um, Deborah Deborah Foreman <laughs> growing mm-hmm. up. Um, yeah, I loved '80s horror, and I loved April Fool's Day. I it's just such a great, great movie. One of the few that seemed to have that balance between horror and comedy just just right. I mean, not too heavy on either side. Do you? I mean, do you have a horror comedy? somewhere in the future and what 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 does that look like for you uh well i i mean some people would say the ice cream truck is a horror comedy i'm trying to think of what i i have written a a teen horror comedy about a vampire a kid who uh, is half vampire and cool. i would love okay. for that to be made and i do work in other genres i actually a christmas movie i just, i wrote 
just finished shooting in Cape Cod. So I sideline as a holiday writer. <laughs> oh, wow. Kind of okay. funny. Well, and I tell people, like, those romantic, like, Hallmark Christmas movies are not too different from horror because there's still a suspense element in romance because it, it's, you know, will they or won't they? Just like horror is, like, will it or won't it or will they survive? You know, there's still this kind of push-pull with the, you know, the writing and the formula that's, a little bit similar. Oh, uh, yeah. I hadn't thought about it that way, but structurally, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's reeling you in. And <laughs> um, horror does that same thing. It's giving you little bits at a time and then, you know, pulling you in towards, you know, the crescendo. And um, they're both fun to write in different ways. I I wouldn't probably direct a Christmas movie just because I would like to stick to genre as like as a filmmaker but i love writing the holiday stuff (laughs) it's really fun a different outlet yeah yeah but yeah and i do the kids um the i feel like there's a void in the marketplace for like younger you know like 12 year olds being able to watch scary movies that aren't so scary i feel like they're the movies are either really, really young, skewing, like ridiculously young, mm-hmm. or they're too scary. And there aren't enough movies that are scary, but not, you know, the witches came out like I recently, I guess that's similar, but I mean more like the previous witches, which was scarier. Oh, um, sure. You know, that kind of age range. I think there needs to be more movies that you can watch with your kids around Halloween, you know, who aren't ready for, Michael Myers. Yeah, you got to you got to start them off at a certain place. I think the first thing I ever showed my daughter was Monster Squad. I was like, this is a, oh, yeah. you know, she's six. That's a safe place to start. I mean, I had her on Exorcist by the time she was nine, but we started yeah. with Monster <laughs> Squad, so you know. My son just turned nine. He's he has watched Jaws. He he likes zombies and like creature danger. He has seen signs, but when it comes to like people danger. Um, you know, or supernatural, he's too scared. Yeah, I yeah, think. So. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say no, 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 devil's rejects just yet, huh? <laughs> no, but he liked tremors and he liked arachnophobia. You know, those are I'm like. Okay, let's find all the creature scary movies. <laughs> well, he's, he's got he's got good taste. That's uh-huh. arachnophobia. I think is one of the most underrated underappreciated movies for the actual scare value in it. Honestly. I hear they're making a sequel. Oh my. Oh yeah. You didn't would, hear it from me. <laughs> <laughs> I would be on that like flies on shit. Yeah. My I think we That's all pretty would. good. <laughs> so uh, kind of uh, digging in a little more to just your taste. What's uh, what would you say is the, the one film that influenced your style the most? I mean, I would say there's a few. As a director, what I started watching, oddly, before I started filmmaking, the the movies that I really, even though they're not, I love this director and not all of his films are perfect, most are not, but there are elements to his films that I give me goosebumps. And mm-hmm. so as a filmmaker, I really like for inspiration I watch and listen to the music of Dario Argento films. Oh yes, absolutely. I listen to um Profondo Rosso a lot before uh shooting Rebound. Mm-hmm. Um and watch the movie and I really like his movies. I I even though he's problematic I I really like Roman Polanski. One of my favorite sure. horror films also is The Changeling with George C. Scott. Freaking Love. masterpiece. I know. It's in my top ten for sure. There's never been a better seance scene films in oh the history my God. of horror. I know. They've it's... copied it. It's, is it Insidious? Which one is it with um, Lynn Shea where it seems? Yeah, Insidious. Yeah. Lynch, yes, where she's wearing like the mask. I mean, I feel like... At, that's very similar with the scribbling 
But maybe yeah. that's how they do it. Maybe that's how people do seances. I don't I don't know any mediums personally, so <laughs> <laughs> can't say I can't know. say I do either, but yeah. You see the scribbling in movies, but I would, the structure of that scene, just the way the shots yeah. look, is pretty similar. But I think a lot of people ape the changeling when you when you get to be a certain level of awesome. People are going to ape you no matter what. So right, I mean the changeling is just, and I like a lot of movies from that era. And you know, I like Don't Look Now, but I don't think it compares to the changeling. Just the level of pain and, like, flawed, um, you know, how George C. Scott just, he just encompasses that in his character, and you just, like, you feel like you're in it with him, and it's, it's really just some, just a visceral experience, but that, you know, you got to have patience for it. You can't, you need to know, like, I'm, if this is not going to be constant action, yeah, no jump scares, no no constant uh, oh, action. There's a few. Well, yeah, yeah, there there are there are some, but it's it's They're definitely the sound. Oh my god, the sound design on that movie mm-hmm. is first rate. The music is sad. The sound is sad. There's just a sadness that permeates that. All right, calls are merged and we're back. All right, cool. Want to make sure I was about about to start tearing into it, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to feel stupid if I forget to record the second part of the interview, and then I go back and look at it and go, oh, shit, I missed all that. That would really suck. <laughs> um, good. Yeah, I think we're set now. Um, so could you indulge me enough to, uh, you know, you're still very much in the independent space, which is kind of where I like to hang out, too. Um, could you give me... Uh, say a, a handful of say recent independent horror movies that people simply need to see that maybe aren't getting appreciated enough. Hmm, that's a good question. In the really low, I'm trying to think in the really low budget space. Well, I, have you seen The Love Witch? The Love Witch? I'm not entirely sure. I'm checking it on IMDb here. I don't think I've ever really heard of that one, to be honest. Yeah, The Love, the Love Witch. Witch is, the Love Witch is amazing. Um, it's it's kind of a, a spoof on, like, 60s films, and it, you should definitely check it out. It's on a lot of uh, best of lists for that year. It's mm-hmm. very stylized. I think you will like it. Um, oh, wow. Looking at the pictures. Yeah, it looks like an old yeah. episode of the Batman TV series. The color yeah. on that is gorgeous. Yeah. It's, I think you will I think you will like that a lot. Nice. Going on the watch list for sure. Sorry, I like I like to pick people's brains a little bit too. <laughs> well, okay. And in, in the indie space also, you know, you can have – Big, some bigger stars in independent films, so I'm really more just saying straight to VOD here, but I very much enjoyed Mom and Dad. Mom and Dad. Which and is Selma Blair and Nicolas Cage. I highly recommend. Oh, dear God, yes. Okay, no, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it now. That one I have seen, and I, I almost pissed myself laughing at it a couple times. When it when it's funny, it's really funny, and when it's horrifying, it's it's borderline grotesque. That's a great choice. Yeah. Am, am I sounding garbled for you? Uh, not particularly, no, man. Okay. Um, let's see what else. I it's not really a horror, but I really liked them that follow. I don't know if you know what that is. I'm 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 looking them up as you see them, so <laughs> them that <Yep>. follow. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Hey, it classifies it as a drama thriller. Close enough for my money. But I yeah. don't I don't yeah, I'm one I don't crap on any genre. I watch everything, so Well it's I I mean it there it's suspenseful, but it's not um it's not like a, a horror horror, but it is suspenseful for sure. Oh, have you seen The Lodge? I loved The Lodge. The Lodge was amazing. I think that was okay. the last movie I got to see in theaters before all this crap oh, really? stuck us back in our houses. But 
Yeah, that's that one is absolutely fantastic. The Lodge is, I've recommended that to many, many people, and I've yet to have one person come back and be like, man, I didn't get it. Okay. Um, what about Incident at Ghostland? Oh, I think yeah. that's on. I think that's on Shutter right now. It sounds really you familiar, to, but I can you definitely have to say. Watch that. Incident in a Ghost Land. Okay, that is the you one I'm love. thinking of. Yeah, it's on Shutter, but I think I put it on my list and have actually yet to have a there chance to watch it. There are some people that put that in their favorite horror film of that year, like out mm. of everything. Nice, nice. If that gives you any indication of how good it is. Good cast too. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I would Sorry, definitely I'm... check. Cool, cool. I'm be I'm being selfish and picking your brain because uh, <laughs> I, I like to, I like to see what the people that know a lot more than me. <laughs> well, recommend. you know, I don't. I I have two kids, so I don't always, you know, get tons of time to watch stuff myself. Mm-hmm. You know, I there's still a lot of things on my list that I need to see. I really want to see a cure for for wellness. Um, oh, highly definitely on my list. Oh, yeah, that I movie, that I movie is such a, it screws with your mind so hard, so hard. Mm-hmm. Okay. And have you seen Hush on Netflix? That's a great one. Hush was also fantastic, yeah. Okay. T- tension, tension that, you know, is unmatched almost. I mean, movies like yeah. The Thing, but have that kind of tension, but the device that they use to build the tension and hush oh, is absolutely killer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, that's all I can really think of at the, well, the inv- have you seen the invitation? The invitation. Oh, that's in my top 10 also. Um, oh, wow. Okay. That's Karen Kusama. She directed Jennifer's body, but this is a completely, different tone. This is Logan Marshall Green, who you would know from Upgrade. Yeah, the um, guy that looks just like Tom Hardy, but isn't Tom Hardy. <laughs> yes, yes. He goes to a party, and the suspense is so thick, the tension. This is a little bit of a slow, but it's like palpable tension until the shit hits the fan. Nice. Like the shit totally, You, I highly... Highly recommend it. Like sprays the wall, hits the fan. <laughs> it 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 goes full throttle after you know I don't know how long. It's just like this constant um, unease, and it's just fantastic. Very cool. I'm building myself a little list. I like it. <laughs> and if I if I can you know. Pick at your brain for one more question because I was I do a lot of research, check old interviews and stuff, and I, you had answered. I don't remember exactly what the question was, but you had given an answer that just made me grin from ear to ear. You were talking about, uh, you said that you still rock the original Nintendo Entertainment System, and oh, yeah. that Kid Icarus was your favorite game. I've always <laughs> maintained. I ar- I've argued with people about this that Kid Icarus is one of the three most criminally underrated just not appreciated anywhere near the level it should be original yeah. NES games. Um, my other two would be Star it's Tropics so and Shadowgate. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it, the challenge level. It makes – it makes everybody talks about Metroid, but I've always said that Kid Icarus makes Metroid look like a kid's game. The challenge is just yeah. so much higher in Kid my Icarus. My son doesn't even play it. He just will watch me because it's like you jump a millimeter outside of where you're supposed to do it. It's not like you have more lives. You're done. You have to start all over again. It's just the craziest. Yeah, that that concept of having one life and having to get through the whole game with it, like a Kid Icarus or a Rygar, is something that you just don't yeah. see nowadays because nobody has the balls to put out a game that will piss you off that much. I don't remember how to, like, save and get – because I, I, I have not gotten – hugely far since being an adult. I feel like when I was a child, I got much farther than I am now. (laughs) (laughs) I keep having to, like, I'm only in, like, level one, and I can't, like, I get far in level one, and then it just, uh, it's so hard, but I like, but it's so addicting, and, yeah, we love it. 
Because <laughs> cool. you can you can buy stuff. You know, you get all of those things that you collect, and like I'm, yeah, it's just I just played it recently, actually, like the other day. It's I think it's the most fun game. I just love it. Yeah, that one that one definitely goes in my in my personal top five for NES games. They just don't make them like that anymore. I'm with you. I play my I NES all the time. To this day, I play my old systems more than my new systems. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, we've got what do we have? We have Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and uh, and an Xbox. Okay. And I would say they all get played, but Nintendo probably gets played the most. Super Nintendo we like, but it's usually just um, Street Fighter is what we're playing. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you can't go wrong with the classics. Yeah. I've learned to really love the Switch. As a side note, it, it, it truly is a fantastic system. They've got some phenomenal games. It's worth mm. buying for mm-hmm. for for the new Legend of Zelda. It's it's worth buying for oh, that okay. alone. I've gotten oh, probably no. three hundred hours of gameplay out of Breath of the Wild, and my daughter's out there right now playing the new one that just came out a couple of days ago or okay. whatever it was. I'm a, I'm a Zelda junkie. I was always more of a Zelda guy nice. than a Mario guy. I love Link. I, I never got to turn to Zelda, but I I really love Link. Link is also one of my favorite games. <laughs> For sure. Very cool. I'm taking your brain to death here. Well, uh, I've run through most of what I had, but please do let me know what's 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 up next for you. Well, as much as you can know what's up next for you in a year like this, anyways. Um. Well, I am producing a few projects uh, based on Elmore Leonard material, and I have a couple of films that I would like to direct soon, one being Hunting Season, and then I have another one that's um, a horror. And then, yeah, I'm trying to do this vampire tween horror. And then in on the side, I, I write Christmas movies. <laughs> so <laughs> that seems to be what's going on. That may be the most shocking revelation of the entire interview. I don't I don't know why. I just can't picture the the, the I feel like the a Christmas movie you make would just have some really fucked up twist at the end. Do you know what I mean? Like no, not only you do know, you not get the girl, you've been eaten by Santa. <laughs> no. They're they're surprisingly wholesome. Honestly what happened was I got really sick last year. I I got bronchitis like around before Thanksgiving and I was sick for a really long time. It was one of those hang on, you know, cold situations and so I just didn't want to watch the news or anything political I was just kind of burned out and so I started watching those Hallmark movies and just for fun you know I'm like oh my god I can see why people love these it's just like literally having just like Christmas on in the background you know you don't even really need to know the plot it's just like (laughs) moving Christmas on your screen and I was like, I could totally write one of these. <laughs> and so in January, I wrote one, and that one has not been made yet, but it got me a job to write another one, which just was completed. So oh, nice. that's kind of how that – they're just really – they're fun and easy to write, and, you know, they make people happy. So, you know, yeah. it's just – my family loves them. They're more excited that a Christmas movie of mine is being made than anything else I've done. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> they don't all love horror. So they're like, finally, something we can, you know, not be scared of. Well, not, well so. now you got to make the Christmas horror movie. So I guess that one comes down the road. <laughs> yeah, I probably should make a Christmas horror. You're right. There's not very good, very many good Christmas movies. I, I do like Krampus, but it's kind of silly. There needs yeah. to probably be more. It seems like uh, at least three or four different people recently have taken a stab at that whole Krampus myth, and I, I, I would yeah. dare say nobody's nailed the tone of it exactly yet. Although there have been some mm-hmm. very cool creatures <laughs> and versions mm-hmm. of Krampus, but yeah, I haven't seen one that's really knocked my socks off yet. Yeah, I you know I should I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do that I think I'm gonna write a Christmas horror movie. I don't know why that didn't occur to me. My favorite Christmas horror anything, I think it was an episode, was it Was it a Tales of the Crypt episode? Oh, where Santa shows up with the axe? Yes. Yes. Is, is it Joan Collins? Like, I, that to me is one of the coolest Christmas scary anythings I've ever seen. 
Yeah, I, I, you hit the nail on the head. Well, probably one of the five best episodes ever made for Tales of the Crypt from the Crypt, which is saying a lot because they had some fantastic episodes, but I love that Christmas one. So nasty. And the, the guy that plays Santa is just terrifying. Well, the hell. thing is, is that she's killing, she kills her husband, and so she doesn't want to get caught. So she puts herself yeah. in more danger because she's trying to, like, figure out how to get out of that. It's really... Very cool. <laughs> um, yeah, that that's totally what, what I feel like I would that type of thing I would do. All righty. Well, then I guess maybe that maybe that fire is lit. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm gonna look forward to the uh, the Christmas horror movie now and awesome. just smile someday when I see it and be like I, I had a little hand in that maybe <laughs> maybe just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you very much, Megan. You've been really generous with your time and just really enjoyed talking to you. Sorry if I picked your yeah, brain you a too. bit much. I want to have everybody get to know you because I know they're going to be seeing a lot more of you soon. So I'm glad I I'm glad I got this interview. I fought to get this one. Oh, awesome! Well, thanks for having me. And if anyone wants to see any of my films, they're all on Amazon Prime and you know wherever else you can get your your movies. Yes, ma'am. Uh we will definitely do that. So thank you very much. I've uh I think I've exhausted everything that I have. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Have a good night. You too, Megan. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.